Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm Robert Sherwood and I'm here to show you how to design a system to deal with a flat yard with no slope. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. In the comments section, I'm being asked every single day I get comments, well, where do I take my water if my yard is flat and there's no slope and I don't have a storm drain available and people they they act like they've never seen us do anything but a storm drain corn tap so I'm going to put together what I hope to be a very detailed video on a very flat yard where water could not make its way out and with no slope at all, I'm going to show you how you drain your yard. So this gentleman provided these pictures. As you can see here in Michigan, we do really live all four seasons, a thaw and then a refreeze. His yard is now an ice rink. So he has a, an extreme problem here. He has a young child that can't even use the yard. He has two Dobermans. You know, those that's a large dog. And yes, they're going to be come, coming in covered in mud. So when he reached out to us, he had already seen a lot of our videos. And he wasn't sure exactly how to go about it. And he knew the amount of work that it probably entailed. Now, he did have about 15 other guys show up. And what they told him would fix the problem was just basically a few basins going to nowhere. And this gentleman's seen enough video of ours to know there's no way that's going to work. So what we did, we went ahead and we used the dirt for our French drain and our yard drain. We used it to crown the yard so that it wasn't as flat. And then we created a couple of areas that were now the low points, the collection areas, what we refer to as a swell. So this dig went on all afternoon. This was a pretty big project. So this was an all day project. Normally, as you guys know, we take you through a day. If you're hanging around with us for a day, you're gonna to get to see two or three jobs. But this one entailed a lot. This one entailed a French drain. Inside the French drain is a yard drain. So you're going to see a combination where I'll define the two, explain the two. You're also going to see some of our FDM 20 inch catch basins for all that, you know, surface water. When you get bulk water at the surface, then you need a yard drain built inside of your French drain. So we're going to show you how to do that. And since everybody says, my yard is flat, I can't get no slope. And I answer in the comments section all the time, you need a lift station. You need an outdoor sump pump system. And I have a lot of videos on that, but I guess I need to put everything together from A to Z so you guys know how to get from A to Z because when I just show certain videos I'm finding it is very difficult for most to be able to understand where we're at what we're dealing with you know to do the things that we do so we're going to go into great detail on how we go from our collection system, a slight regrade. Not We're not going to do too much to this yard. Just crown the middle of that backyard is the only plan. We're actually going to have a collection system on three sides, which you'll see us install. And then we're going to build a sump system in the backyard. That's going to, It's going to be an active lift station with a 20-inch chamber. So that's a pretty big chamber. You've seen how bad the water is. You've seen what this homeowner has to deal with. So I want to make sure even if his sump pump fails, I have a lot of chamber and I you know that's going to be a lot of reservoir in a pinch. I also for the yard drain pipe, 
you're going to see this big yellow pipe. It's six inch solid. It's not the perforated. And you're also going to get to see us use the high octane with a sleeve or a sock on it. And I'm going to give you an explanation for all of that as well. Finally, when we get this water lifted, we're going to take it to a leach field out in the front yard. And I'm going to teach you all kinds of tricks and techniques on how to build those leach fields. Now, the front yard's pretty flat, too. Not only is it pretty flat, but the city does not want us discharging the water any closer to the sidewalk than six feet. So we're dealing with a lot of variables here. I thought this would be a great job to take you guys along for the ride for the entire day and break it down for you. And hopefully this answers many, many, many comments and future comments. Now, we're already putting in a 6-inch solid virgin pipe. That's not our 4-inch yellow. That's our 6-inch yellow. We call it our mini culvert pipe. That'll move 550 gallons per minute. Now, how we're going to collect the water and get it into that 6-inch pipe we're going to put in four 20 inch in diameter catch basins and they'll accept six inch or four inch so that's what's nice they're made to accept both so we're digging in the side of the house right here and we're getting deep now this is great that we're talking about we're starting to get deep flat yard we're creating our own slope we're collecting all the surface water in our yard drain. Our yard drain will take 6-inch pipes or 4-inch pipes. Our, our basin that is a 20-inch round for yard drains, not a French drain. I wouldn't connect my French drain pipe to a, a yard drain basin. That's what I always preach not to do. That's how you end up with a French drain with an early expiration date. So... We love these heavy-duty 20-inch round with both 4-inch and 6-inch uh, capable as far as hookups go. You can have a quad pack if you want and hook it up to that. So there's that mini culvert pipe, that virgin yellow mini culvert pipe. You've seen my hand on it. It's not perforated. It's solid. You can see we're digging out all these pieces of concrete from an old fence that was there prior to the fence you see to the left of this video. And right there in the very corner, we have another one of those 20-inch round. Now, see, there's the 6-inch. That's where we're going to hook it up. It's now accepts corrugated in 6-inch. So we love them. Everybody's been asking for something like that. We now have that available. We're creating our own slope we have slope through this entire system. We're using the dirt to crown up the yard. We don't want the water to roll towards the house without catching the water there. So we have a swale on both sides. We do have a yard drain on three sides. So I'm going to take you through the whole thing as we shape this yard. So there's a lot of work going on here because we're trying to completely repitch and regrade this backyard to draw the water to these collection areas it's so flat that we're just going to crown it we're going to get it to run into the areas that we didn't have no dirt that's just going to be our swaled area now we're digging down the side of this house because we have a monster lift station going in 20 inch chamber it's got four feet of height it's no joke these are the types of things that we really enjoy it's not cookie cutter it's a lot of fun and we love it so this dirt is getting repurposed in the very yard that we're working on we're working on creating a nice crown you can see the guys are just bringing the dirt and they're spotting it we had a meeting of all the mines and I got a couple guys that really know how to grade. I told them how I want the swales to be. It, the dirt was already kind of built up on the fence because they were trying to keep out the neighbor's water because there's some pool yards that just flood this yard. 
And actually, they got away with something that this is in Sterling Heights, Michigan, and the building department does not allow you to concrete all the way to the property line. When you have swimming pool decks, you know, concrete deck, stamp concrete deck, brick paver deck, it's code that the water has to shed away from the pool because for health reasons, you can't have that storm water enter your pool. So this, this situation, he's got, this homeowner's got a pool yard on each side of him that is cemented right to the fence. So he's dealing with all that. But it did really help that somebody was building up along the fence with dirt because now I had a swale to work with. So that's why you don't see us putting dirt near the fence line. We don't want that. That's our collection area. You have to keep a low area as your collection area. So here we are. We're building up the grade and we're repurposing all the dirt from the system. And remember, this yard was flat. The front yard was flat. The backyard was flat. Everything about this, it couldn't have been more flat. So we have pitch on our entire system. We have 3% slope in our French drain and yard drain combination, which we'll talk more about that when we get to it. Right now, we're probably on the deepest part of the dig we were putting in the sump system, which I will show you more. So hooking up six inch pipe means you have to make sure you purchase the right hardware with these basins. The basins come, you know, for four pipes to be hooked up that are four inch. That's the hardware it comes with. So if you end up wanting one of the FDM 20 inch round for a six inch hookup, you do have to call the office because we have to make sure you have the right hardware uh, going out with that. So look at that big six inch culvert pipe. And now we're drilling holes in the basin. Remember, always drill holes in the basin. A lot of people say, hey, it's clay. You know, it it doesn't perk. It's not going to help. I, I don't agree with that. Even clay has some percolation that's why it turns to pudding that's why when you walk in a yard that's flooded it's soft and squishy that's clay taken in water so we don't want this to be a petri dish there's two dogs and a very young child in this yard and we want for their safety we want these basins to dry up so after a storm there's going to be a lot of evaporation we have holes drilled out, you know, through the bottoms of all of them. Okay, so two guys, you really need a second set of hands when you're working with this culvert pipe, this mini six-inch virgin culvert pipe of Boffman's. It's no joke, and it does take, you know, an extra couple hands, that's for sure. It's not like the four-inch. Even cutting out these big six-inch, look at that, you know, so that you can go ahead and, put your adapters for the six inch in through that. Now notice how high we are. So I already had the guys slope the trench and even the basins drop in level, but I want the pipe up high so that any debris, any you know tree leaves, uh, bark, you name it, whatever you can think of during a storm that goes down into a big 20 inch round grate I want that to set and settle at the bottom of these basins to keep that six inch pipe clean. Now, because it's Boffman tile, if you want like say every 10, 15, 20 years to send a jetter through it because it's a yard drain, not a French drain, keep that in mind. It's not perforated pipe, it's solid. And I endorse building a yard drain with basins. I just don't endorse building a French drain with basins. So we're going to get to that too as well. So Francisco's doing a great job here. He's got these knockouts cut. You know, he's putting in the hardware for the six inch so that it now accepts that six inch Boffman virgin tile. That, that yellow, yellow or blue means it's virgin material, no recycled materials. So you're not dealing with recycled restaurant containers, all that stuff that, you know, the animals can smell, dig up, chew on your system. And for longevity, 
it definitely doesn't hold up like the virgin material when you have that black pipe with all the additives in it. So I put a drain right here next to that cement pad, the outdoor living space. Now you see how deep that is? See how we really have it recessed compared to the grass around it? That's because I want the water to go in that basin. I want it to catch everything. So that's going to be the low point at this point in the backyard. It's going to take all that surface water that you've seen in those pictures. It's going to take in all that bulk water. And it's going to handle it just fine because it's a solid 6-inch pipe with four 20-inch round inlet basins. So this is one heck of a yard drain system. This is honestly commercial. This is commercial level here. I seen those pictures and I seen just how bad things were and the neighbors have all this concrete, non-permeable surfaces. I knew we were in trouble. We had to bump it from four inch to six inch just to get it done. I wanted to make sure that when we did this that we didn't have to come back for any modifications. You know our slogan do it right the first time and even if that means spending a few extra bucks then you don't have to revisit it or possibly tear it out in the future so this yard drain the guys have been wrestling with this big six inch pipe and these big 20 inch basins and getting this all together the dig is done back here everything's sloped we have our fabric in now why would you put fabric in with a yard drain you're absolutely right. You would not need it normally, but we are going to put a French drain in with this yard drain. So we're going to do a combination. And once we put our high octane pipe in there, then we can fill it full of stone. Then we could wrap it. Now we can then go ahead and just grow grass right over it. So we're making some of the final connections for this big six inch system so that we can start working on building this, the uh, lift station, the outdoor sump system, is definitely, in this case, going to be used as a lift station. We're flat, so we sloped, our, we sloped our trench all the way to the sump. So there is your high octane. Why is it white? Because it has a sleeve or a sock on it. We have cobblestone that has broken cobble in it. What happens when you have small pieces of stone in with your stone? See, that's inch and a half cobble. I love that stuff. That's what we always get. But we ended up getting a couple loads with broken cobble in it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they sell you that broken uh, cobble at the same price as the inch and a half cobble. Because when you buy a truck of this, they go on a scale and you're buying it per ton. So... It's going to be just garbage. They'd have to dig a hole and just bury the broken cobble if they didn't sneak it in loads and charge us an extra four or five ton of broken cobble on a big truck like a super train. So it's, it's kind of a bummer, but, you know, I see it all the time. My subscribers are talking about, about it all the time. And you've seen the, the sleeve and the sock, that white material, we call that a sock or a sleeve, in the industry the blue high octane is inside that that's so those little stone chips don't plug the inlets on the high octane because we all know dirt washes right through high octane dirt has no problem washing through high octane I don't care how dirty the stone is because I know all the dirt is going to wash right through it go through our pump our pump system our lift station is going to take it and just pump it out to the front yard which you're going to see here soon all right so the guys are building this lift station and it's pretty elaborate we actually got a, a sump area so picture this we got a 20-foot chamber and then we have a sump that we built into this because i want to make sure if that yard drain pipe brings any debris that did not get caught in those 20 inch round basins i want there to be a big sump right before the pump so the debris just collects and falls in that i don't want our pumps working hard on you know moving too much debris and possibly that causing a, a situation where you have a failure and now you wake up to a flooded backyard because this homeowner's dealt with enough of that he's counting on us 
to bring our expertise to throw everything we have at this problem so that he never has to live that again. Now look at that French drain. Look at that. Look at all that stone, all that inch and a half cobble. You think that's going to flow a lot of water? Man, that's going to move a lot of water. So right here is for the surface water. And remember, a six-inch pipe can move 550 gallons per minute. So that's cranking. And that's just like on a 1% slope, which we have 3% slope back here. Then our high octane, it's in a sleeve or a sock. That's rated for 300 gallons per minute through a square foot of that sock. So I'm not worried about the sock slowing down the water going in the high octane. I want the sock on the high octane because of all the small stone chips in our stone. Unlike the dirt, it doesn't wash through. It actually gets caught in those inlets, and that's where the problem lies. So that's where the sleeve or the sock shines. This is the only place that we use a sleeve or a sock when we're dealing with stone that's fragmented, you, whether it's a crushed stone and you have little you know, pieces of crushed stone, whether it's you know crushed cobble mixed into the cobble. So look how big this lift station is going to be. And there's our sump, you can see. And you know another thing that sump's going to serve, I'm going to put the heater in that sump. That's a great place to drop the heater. So this system here, well thought out. I mean, we really put a lot of time into each and every system that we build. And we so look how many elements we're dealing with here. We're building this monster lift station. We're dealing with a French drain. We got a yard drain inside our burrito wrapped French drain. So yard drain, French drain, lift station with a monster chamber. You guys are working really hard to plumb that right now, getting every little detail perfect. Here in Michigan, we have no room for if you mess up and leave a belly somewhere, that freezes. Everything's got to drain. Everything's got to be smooth. The bottom's got to be smooth. Everything's got to flow. It has to empty and leave no water behind, especially at discharge line. So we'll go over some, some of that. Look at the corner of that house, how it sunk during all those years of wet backyard. Look at how it's cracked. Look at... Can you imagine what it takes to fix something like that? Look at the damage already caused from a yard that did not drain properly. Are we here in time? Well, the gentleman bought the house a couple years ago and found out very quickly he inherited this you know, flooding problem. And he loves his home, his wife, their beautiful baby, and the family dogs. He's just trying to get this fixed right. Man, look at the corner of that house. Such a shame that this all could have been prevented had there been a good system in place. So somebody probably took a couple of tries at draining this property and just never got it right. That's usually the case. I could see that they definitely brought dirt in. and you know, That's how the yard got so flat to begin with. I mean, the flatter it is, now you scattered the water everywhere, and it's going to take more effort to collect it. In this case, it being a smaller lot in Sterling Heights, Michigan, we're able to repurpose all the dirt we're digging out and crown it. On a bigger piece of property, you can't do that. The haul-in is so ridiculous that you just got to grid the whole yard, do French drain grid, which you guys have seen my French drain grids. Just go on YouTube and just put in French drain grid. A couple of my videos will pop, and that's how you dry out an entire yard when you can't afford to bring in gravel train after gravel train of fill dirt. So we got our inch and a half cobble, and we got our high octane in there with the sock on it so that none of those small chips, those little fine chips, make their way into the high octane inlet. The guys are still hard at work, almost done with this lift station. So see the height? We're going to keep that height. What's nice is you lift the water to that height, and now as you pump it out to the front, it gives you slope. The higher you lift the water, the more slope you have to work with. And, of course, we're going to run the discharge line just along the side of the house in the front until we get to our leach field. So this looks great. This is 
just about done back here. We did have to take the fence off to get our machines in there, and we barely, we were barely able to get in there even with the fence being, you know, disassembled. The hardware was in the way. So whatever it takes, you know, we try to save the homeowner money. If this would have been all done by hand, the price would have literally been double on this job. So you want it machine accessible, even if you got to take the yard apart. So here's our leach field manifold along with some knife cut. Now, I have a lot of videos on knife cut and how we use it in leach fields. And right there, I sprayed out where our leach field's going to be. So there's our discharge line from that lift station in the backyard. But there's a whole other project that lies ahead. We have to build this leach field, and it's got to be done right. If you miss on this, then all this work is for nothing. Now, remember, that yard flooded bad. And now we have to come in, build a system that collects the water, build a system that lifts the water. We got our slope in a flat backyard. I taught you guys how to do that. We sloped all the way down to this lift station. It doesn't matter if you're a foot, 18 inches, two feet down. As you get more and more slope, you just have to have a taller riser on your lift station. So I laid that out on the ground just to make sure we had our dig right. We marked it off. Everything looks perfect to me. And in Sterling Heights, Michigan, you have to be six feet from the sidewalk when you're discharging water. I don't expect very much water to ever come out of the system. I'll explain why as we're building it. When you see what we put into this leach field, you'll understand. So there's still a lot of work back here. You know, we still got to get a finished grade and put some seed and straw down. We got to get the fabric pulled nice and tight and trim it and size it. And we still got to get some more stone in, and we're putting stone on top of that chamber. Look at that 20 foot chamber that has holes drilled throughout it. So it's going to take in water too. It's actually part of the collection system. So think about that. When you drill a bunch of holes in your chamber, that now is part of your collection system. So we have all the way across the backyard collecting water. We have all of our 20 inch round basins set as the lowest points in the yard. So the water's going to funnel right to them. How do you like that? Every time you go through there, you got to raise your bucket and you're dragging the wires. It's, you know, something we see on each and every job. There's always something to overcome. That's why you want skilled trades. That's why you want guys that have a lot of experience, you know, operating machinery. My guys, they're less laborers now than ever and more machine operators, which is perfect. I want to extend their career, and I hope they stay with me for decades and decades to come. The electricians there, what we're doing here, there was an old pool back here, and there was a plug for some of the pool filter. I mean, this is an above ground, you know, doesn't have as much stuff going on as an in ground. And we're just basically relocating that. We just cut it off right there, and we're using it. It saved a couple bucks. It didn't save a lot because there's still quite a bit, a lot of work to, you know, getting everything wired and put in place for that for that lift lift station that we built. So the fabric goes in now. You can see our, our electrical is going to be deep enough. Notice how I don't even think twice about the downspout in the corner of this house. See, that's just going to pour right into our collection system. I still can't believe how badly that corner of that house foundation is cracked. All right, so there's so much cobble in this, broken cobble and that stuff. We were just talking about it. It's frustrating. So now... This is the final. This is for keeps. We got everything dug right. We got everything sized perfect. We're putting in that chamber for like the third time. And again, that's just because you're digging, you're adding length, you're you're working with the slope, you're working with the the 
basin. I got that sump there to collect additional debris since we have a yard collection system. We know debris is going to be in that six inch solid pipe and it's going to bring it into our chambered system. So there's a few places you could take a shop vac. Okay, look at the neighbor's pool yard. Look at all that concrete. I mean, there is not a green belt anywhere to be seen. And look at this. Here we go. All that concrete drains towards my client. That shouldn't even have happened. I mean, Sterling Heights and, uh, and their inspectors dropped the ball, or maybe some of that was done after the inspections. I don't know, but the fact that I'm working for a gentleman who just purchased this house a year and a half, two years ago, you know, he really doesn't have much say in all that. That stuff was there when he bought the house, and it was not disclosed that this house had a yard drain issue. So there's the high octane. There's the sock over it. That's a filter sock to keep little chunks of stone from plugging the high octane inlets. We just started bringing in that this year because we were getting so many people all over the United States and Canada saying, hey, is there any way you can sock high octane? Because we're getting a lot of stone fragments too. And it is just so timely and so costly to try to screen that out that it's just not even worth it. For the cost of a sock put on high octane, that's... So right now we're digging a sump. So we're making the sump part of it deeper than the rest of the chamber. And yes, we're going to connect the piece to where dirt from the yard drain can just fall in that sump. Now the homeowner can very responsibly take his shop vac, go around, suck out all those basins, all those catch basins. Because remember, look at that. Look at those little pieces of rock that block your inlets on your pipe. I mean, it's, it's so frustrating seeing that. Look at that. All that stuff will fit in the void of high octane, in the inlet of high octane. It'll just plug it. So that's why we got the sock on it. So if you're considering buying a certain stone that really has a good drainage properties, you know, it's an inch and a half, maybe even two inches, but it's got a lot of stone fragments, you want high octane with a sock. Without a doubt, that's how you want to go. So we've talked this over, me and the guys. You know, we, we plan this. And even with a plan, you run into all kinds of things, like all those big chunks of cement that I showed you from the fence that was there prior to the existing fence. That actually changed a few things. We got a big hunk of concrete where my boys are right now, where you see Francisco and Valente digging. There's there's issues there. So we're trying to overcome that to make sure that everything fits proper, everything sloped proper. So dealing with the concrete, a lot of times there's an old footing there from it could be a shed. God only knows. Our job is to somehow chisel away at it you know sometimes we've got a jackhammer just a section out just so we can get our systems in when you're not working on new construction you know and most of our work is not new construction we're dealing with all existings and most contractors they hate working with existings you know we've kind of made a career of it right from day one i learned quickly how to get in and out of people's backyards without screwing them up. You know, plywood, smaller equipment, power wheelbarrows, all the different things than, you know, through the ev evolution of equipment. You know, we now have these ditch witches that is really changing everything because now the productivity is through the roof. So I explained everything that's going on to the homeowner. He came home from work and, of course, his yard's all tore up and he just wants to know, where is this going and how's it going to end? I reassured him everything's fine. As far as in our world, it's just another day at the office. So you see that piece of high octane with the sock on it? That's going to go in that trench right there, and we're going to connect it right to our 20-foot chamber of our lift station. So we have water that we're catching right up by the house. We have water that we're catching all the way across the backyard, and then we have this nice swale that we formed right down this side, and we're grabbing up all the water that comes out of that one pool yard that's cemented all the way to the fence, and it's just a parking lot. It's just so much concrete, and you've been in 
shopping malls where you run to the car because it's a downpour and maybe you sit and just wait for the downpour to pass so you don't have to drive in it and you see that river of water flowing in that parking lot that's what he's getting from the neighbor so we built a system that will handle it a six inch yard drain with solid pipe and then we have our high octane in a sock with a 20 inch chambered lift station the homeowner, when this was all done, he was blown away. He said, man, this is some serious, serious stuff here. He said, I knew from watching your videos and trying to figure this out on my own that I had to bring you guys in. And he said, and watching it, it was much more than he even had bargained for. He was like, I can't believe what it took to make this right. Now look at the corner of that house that's all cracked. And then somebody took a mortar that didn't match to try to fix the crack. That was because this yard was so just saturated. It was so wet that literally the house settled and just broke. The corner of the house broke. So we're still burrito wrapping this just like we would any of our French drains because it is a French drain. Now, of course, the yellow pipe is solid. It's inside our French drain. And these inlets that take in water, they only go to the solid yellow six inch pipe. It is not tied in with the high octane. I know that a lot of people are having a hard time understanding this, but this is how you build a yard drain with a French drain. So we got Sparky over there getting our electric, you know, finalized so that we can power this lift station. You can see the guys are working really hard to pull this fabric tight. We teach you guys, pull the fabric tight. Don't leave any wrinkles. We have tens of thousands of holes punched in this. We have a process where we double punch it so we can get some bigger holes in there for the grass roots to fit in because the water travels down the grass roots into the system. So that's what's nice. Now, look at this 1050. I want the contractors to pay attention. You see how there's no extra room for that machine? He was running into the fence. The 1550 has added length, and that's one of the biggest negatives. But that very length that it has also gives it more stability. So now look at that. I think that's pretty darn good. Considering we took a bunch of crappy dirt that had low percolation that's why the yard just held water and we broke all that clay up luckily we're in a drought here in michigan so it was pretty dry and now the guys are putting down a real nice mix of bluegrass and we have some annual rye just so that he gets grass right away and bluegrass takes 30 days to germinate so in that amount of time we need something to hold things together now we got blind inlets right there those blind inlets are going to catch that downspout water, and then eventually the grass is going to grow right over those blind inlets, and the roots will just take the water right down through the fabric. But for now, we got our royal blue high octane. Those match our royal blue high octane pipe, and a lot of people want the royal blue because that way everybody knows their yard's their yard drains running on high octane. I had a guy sell his house and he told me people recognized the Royal Blue Blind Inlets and they were so happy to know that we were there. We designed a system. We took care of the drainage because then they knew there was no yard drain problem. So that was pretty cool. We have all colors of blind inlets. If you want green, we have green. If you want the black for winter time because they radiate the most heat in the north, we have the black. We even have white because a lot of people, it just matches whatever they got going on for color scheme in their yard. But believe it or not, ever since we started selling the blue, you know, blind inlet grates, I was shocked. A lot of folks, they're putting in their high octane French drain and they want, you know, people to know, hey, I'm running on high octane. So they use the royal blue blind inlets that we use. Now, you won't see that royal blue forever because the grass will grow over it. That's the plan. So there's our sump viewer, which I absolutely love because you don't have to take the lid on and off, on and off. Now, that lid that was at grade level, the heater's in there, and we already installed that. Now, this system's so big, I put... Oh, there's those blind inlets, the royal blue blind inlets. The grass is just going to engulf those, and they're going to disappear. 
You don't have to remove them. You don't have to trim the grass out around them. Let the grass just engulf them because then you got the roots dangling in the stone and the water just moves right through all those holes. It follows the roots right into the stone. So we've been trying to teach everybody that our fabric has holes punched in it for grass roots. See the low lid? That's where the heater is. And I got a 1,250 watt because I ain't messing around. It's rated for 50 to 600 gallons of water. This system, it could be, say, below zero in Michigan, and we're still going to have the water underground. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be flowing freely. So now, as if you would think all the hard work was already done, all the heavy lifting has been done, now we got to build our leach field. So we're going to show you guys how to build a leach field. I've done videos on it, but I want to do a video that shows a yard drain with a French drain combination. I also wanted to introduce you to that sock on high octane. I wanted you to see a lift station. I wanted you to see a perfectly flat lot because everybody's always telling me I can't get the water out of my yard. It's perfectly flat. Everything's flat. I can't get the water out. How do you do it? And you're learning that today. So we're digging out the leach field. So we got to just haul all this away. We're done with the backyard. This dirt here literally filled our 20 yarder. So that says a lot. Our leach field, we removed not quite 20 yards because of all the air pockets and clay. So we probably took out 15 yards of soil here. Now, your leach field has to be level. Your leach field cannot be running on a hard angle. Otherwise, it doesn't do its job. You want a leach field to be completely level. That way, it comes in contact with so much soil in the front yard. And that soil, even though it's poor percolation, it's going to absorb quite a bit of that water. Now remember, our leach fields are built out of knife cut. This is not eight slot, nor is it four slot staggered. This isn't solid pipe. What is knife cut? Knife cut, it looks like you took a razor blade and just, that's it. Literally just cut the plastic, but you removed no material. It lives up to its name. It looks like a knife cut. And there's the whole point is to load these pipes with water, all four of them. Let's load these pipes up with water and let it very slowly be released into our leach field. Now, what is a leach field? A leach field is a bed of stone. Now, you're going to see a different type of stone used for this leach field. The backyard, I had our inch and a half cobble. You're going to see this is going to be really small. It's not pea stone, but it's called 6A. 6A is what's used for leach fields. So once we get all this clay out of here and we've completely dug out our leach field, we're then going to fill it in with this 6A. At that point, I'm going to show you guys how to plumb and put together the pipe for the leach field. We're going to be on a flat surface. So in the front yard, there was just a, you know, ever, you know, slightly, just a little bit built up on the side of the house as it normally is. So the dig was the deepest where Valentin is standing next to the retaining wall down in a giant trench that's going to be a leach field. Now we take it to our 20 inch round FDM basin and we tie the two center pipes in this four finger leach field. Because remember, we got a manifold, and the manifold, it has four knife cut pipes that we want to load with water. That's going to slowly leak into the 6A that's going to be underneath these pipes. And then, if there is an excess of water during a hundred year rain event, Yes, it can come up out of the grate. We're now in the front yard, and it's not going to be a problem. I don't care how cold it's going to be because I have 
a 1250 watt heater in that monster chamber. I want to bring that water into this leach field hot enough to where there's no issues. So the digging on this is just the majority of the work for this leach field. And it's a whole separate project all by itself, as you can see. I mean, Francisco's just slinging and slinging and slinging uh, shovels of dirt, and we're running them out with the ditch, which as fast as he's shoveling them in. We had a tree out front, a big maple tree, and we're getting into all these anchoring roots. They're not tap roots. They're just the anchoring roots. So they're really strong roots. You know, Valentin's got to take an ax, cut through these roots. I mean, it's... It's quite a bit of work. This, again, could have been a whole separate job just all by itself for most crews. So you can see we have our leach field fully assembled. We have our 200-year FDM tape holding it together. And we are ready to plumb our lift station into our leach field that we've been working on. So we're into the tree roots. It's a little slower going. You're going to see axes flying. I mean, Valentin, don't ask me why. He enjoys it, and we just let him have at it. He's pretty good with an axe. He's a pretty uh, strong guy for buck 40 wet in his boots, and we're really lucky to have him. You know he's been with me for many, many, many years, and we've been making YouTube videos now for the past four years, and you guys have seen him with us each and every time we keep him on the veteran crew because he's so good look at that that is just amazing with all the tree roots that we had to tear out chop out remove beautiful flat 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 bottom to this leach field this has to be flat this is key your leach field has to be flat you want the water to load into those knife cut pipes the knife cuts, remember, they're not ground out. Those cuts are made with a razor blade-like type thing. So when Boffman Tiles run in a bunch of knife cut, these blades don't grind. They don't remove material. They just slice. So you get a like a sweating effect is the best way to describe knife cut when you load it in a leach field and use it the way we're using it. So we're really, really, really close to having the dig done on this leach field. And by this time, we're all getting ready to get home to have dinner with our families. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's been a long day. That backyard was a handful. As you can see, there was a lot of work. And there's only four of us. And one is just making video for you guys. The other three are doing all the work. So you can see Valentin, he's over there chopping away at those anchor, anchoring roots. Do not worry about that. Contractors, your clients are going to say, is that going to kill my tree? No, they're anchoring roots. The roots up near the surface are anchoring roots. You would have to cut them all off all the way around, and yes, the next big windstorm would blow the tree down. But this is not going to be a problem cutting roots on one side of the tree. So the right answer to clients that are concerned about you cutting their tree roots, and trust me, if that tree does anything in the next five years, they're going to blame you. And I can tell you that just from experience. But no, anchoring roots will not kill a tree. It will not be a problem. Get them out of the way. Get your system in. And you know, we're building this to be a leach field. So we're not so worried if in the years to come, the tree has an effect on a leach field. It's not going to be a problem. So our dig is done now. We're lining it with four ounce fabric. So we have our double punched four ounce fabric. We're going to grow sod on the top of this when we're done. I don't want the stone to migrate into the clay and I don't want the clay to migrate into the stone. Now we're cutting out the four inch so here we are. We're cutting out the four inch. We're going to connect the two center, the two that are center on this leach field. You got it. The manifold allows you four pipes. You see four knife cut pipes. They're not solid. They're not four slot staggered. They're not eight slot. It's the six cuts in every valley. That's knife cut. That's what we have there. So our manifolds all together, we have it, you know, with the 200-year FDM tape, everything's in place. 
we see the light at the end of the tunnel on this job now. We're going to get in all this 6A. So you see how we have the 6A in the bottom? We're working on getting that level. We want 6A at the bottom. I'm not looking for bigger voids in a leach field. I need this leach field to just absorb the water and then slowly allow it to leach into all the soil in the front yard. That's what a leach field does. Now, you can elevate your leach fields if you're having issues with it. You can elevate them, and let me tell you, you want to talk about evaporation rate and drying out quick? Man, an elevated leach field. If you have an active, active, say, sump system that you're going to put in, uh, you know, tie the water that it's pumping into a leach field, elevate it. Elevate it because it's going to evaporate, it's going to dry out, it's going to keep up with that active system. So there, we got a 20-inch round basin at the end. We got the two center pipes tied to, the, to that. That's only in the event that we get a 100-year, and the 100-year comes, and we get six inches of rain and X many hours. At least this has an outlet. Very rarely will a customer see water coming out of that 20-inch basin. Very rarely. And we're six feet off the sidewalk to make Sterling Heights happy. I'm on really, really good terms with Sterling Heights. The, one of the main guys there, he's an older gentleman. He's seen so much of our work, and he's just so great to work with. You know, he knows what we're battling, and our goals are the same. He's looking out for the residents of Sterling Heights, and so are we. Our best interest is in our client that we're working for. So now we got our pipes set right where we want them. We're putting more 6A on top of them. So here, this is what we're doing to build our leach field. Now remember, it was a little bit deeper over here where the landscape was all, all this was built up once upon a time just usually if it's built up at all it'll just be that center of the home that one point and you see how we got that plumbed we got the manifold in there four finger leach field with knife cut and we have it plumbed ready to cut our discharge line to size and slide it together and then use some more of our 200 year tape so we don't ever have to worry about this coming apart this is going to withstand all the freeze and thaw that michigan sees so people in canada uk anybody that's dealing with that and you know what these leach fields work in florida they, they work in hawaii i mean if you do this they'll work if you're going to see tropical storms see this leach field i would recommend one that was several times longer if we were dealing with the tropical storms and you could buy a manifold, run four 100-foot uh, you know, coils of knife cut. Now, that would be a screaming you know, leach field for those regions that see a lot of water. Elevate it a little to add to the evaporation. So now we want to make sure we take care of all the bellies in this line because we talked about it. We seen where there were some bellies in that line. So we want to smooth out that line. I like the black line, by the way. You guys might see white. You might see black when you're watching our videos. I favor the black because it has more flexibility. This makes it such a joy to work with. It does tighter bends. A lot of people want me to build sump systems and lift stations that have it discharging from a certain point. And I tell the girls in the office, I don't understand. I mean, I'm building them in the best interest of the client. It's the way the pump sits in there. It's so that the float isn't near the sidewall of the chamber. There's nothing to touch the float so it can't hang up. You can just buy the black discharge line and it'll make a sweeping 90 or it'll make a sweeping 180. I mean, you can take it wherever you want. So just another thing that I want to bring up that comes up a lot. So there's our six inch round. I mean, right now we have a bunch of green lids in stock. I can get them in black as well. I think we only have a couple left. Some people, because we're in the north, want the black ones because, again, it could be 
20 degrees, but if it's sunny out, that radiant energy will thaw that basin out. So again, I've you know brought this up in other videos, but I'm trying to put so much information in this one video that you guys save it and you make your own FDM playlist and you use this repeatedly time and time again because of all the different things we've covered here. So we're getting really close here. We're starting to put a little bit bigger stone over the 6A right now. We have our inch and a half cobble. We're just going to top dress it in that. You know, again, we want it to evaporate. You know, we want, you know, some air circulation up top here. And you're going to see the guys pull the fabric really tight. You're going to see them go ahead and, and, and pin it and breed wrap it. I mean, this leach field, it, it, it's built just like a giant French drain, but it's just the opposite. We're not trying to draw water out of the soil. We're actually doing it in reverse. We're pumping water into a leach field manifold that has knife cut loading these pipes with water and letting it sweat and dissipate into the soil in the front yard. So I can't tell you how many people dog me in the comment sections. Oh, you had a lot of slope. Oh, you had a storm drain. Uh, you had a ditch. I mean, oh, you had a, you took it to a creek. I mean, it, it, the list is long. And I'm like, you know, I just never shoot one of these because the more hands you have involved in building this stuff, the sooner you get home to your families. And usually I'd be on a ditch which more and more actively involved. I, mostly all I did on this job was I became the videographer as well as I exercised my CDL. So I was trucking in the stone and trucking out, you know, some of that uh, heavy clay with all those big roots and and bringing in equipment and whatever the guys needed I was there for them this kept feeding them what they needed because I didn't want them to miss a beat didn't want them to be slowing down and I wanted this job done in a day even though this is a monster job and everybody's always like FDM what did this job run what do you guys get for that kind of work well I'm gonna tell you this job right here runs fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars depending on, you know, accessibility and a few other things. But in Michigan, that's what we get. I know you guys in California and a few other places where the cost of living is through the roof. I know you guys are getting more than we do. I mean, I've talked to you, and it's pretty actually shocking to see what you guys are getting. Notice how we took care of the bellies on the discharge line mounted to the house. We went ahead and mounted it in the areas where it had a belly, and now it's a straight line, nice straight line all the way down to the leach field, meaning that it can't hold water anywhere to freeze in winter. Notice how the guys are pulling this fabric super, super tight and pinning it because, yes, you know, in the event that there was some rain, this could take water in through the surface as well. So that's pretty cool. Now, we're in Michigan. You don't have to do this if you're in Florida. You don't have to do this if you're in Hawaii. Louisiana, all those places that get hot and stays pretty warm year-round, but we have to put straw over our leach fields. This is so that they don't freeze, and they keep working properly. So we go ahead, we pack the straw in really, really tight. It's, it's a great insulator, and I've dug up systems that were, you know, 15, 20 years old. You can still see the straw. So because that's another thing people always say when there's low oxygen, because you're going to grow sod over it. We're going to put the sod, you know, stamp it in. And once the sod roots grow through the fabric, it'll grow through the straw, through the fabric. The water's just going to follow those roots right into the leach field. Any water that happens to be out here. They didn't have any problems out here, but in the event that there's a lot of rain, a hundred year storm, maybe even areas where they had problems, you know, they might see puddling. Not here where this leach field is. This is going to take care of them. Check out the downspout right there. We're just letting it pour right into the leach field. No need to do anything more than that. It's had has these extensions that the homeowner already did to get it out of that corner and it can just end up in the leach field it's not going to be a problem all right everybody don't forget to give us a thumbs up until the next video